Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palne Pramanikam. I am so so excited because this is my first in-person interview with my favorite person. She is my uh, kid's pediatrician and her name is Dr. Meena Satapan. She's a very very busy pediatrician in uh, San Jose area here in Northern California. She has been a pediatrician for 30 years and uh, I brought her into our channel because I really want to talk about pediatric obesity and I really want to focus on that because as you guys know obesity is my passion and I want to make sure that things get corrected right from the childhood all right um, thank you so much for coming thank you Dr. Pal and <laughs> hello everyone um, I really appreciate talking about this because this is you know I'm very passionate about childhood obesity too nice so. nice 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 um, so as everybody knows, especially after COVID, I know obesity rates has been increasing. Um, is it the same thing that you're seeing here in your practice as well? Absolutely. You know, the pandemic definitely didn't help. And obesity in, in, in the United States, you know, one in four children is overweight now. One, one in, in four. four. Yeah. So 25% wow. of our patients. And in India, it's in kids, it's close to one in eight to one in 10. It's only getting worse and with kids we say, you know, they're overweight when the body mass index is more than the 85th percentile or BMI is more than 25 and they're obese if the BMI is more than the 95th percentile or BMI is more than 30 and BMI is a proportion of your weight, you know, over the height. So yeah, certainly it's getting worse. Um, so BMI is the number for adults what I, from yeah. what I know. Yeah. For pediatrics, at from what age will you calculate BMI? So typically at two, two. you know, mm -hmm. two we start calculating because until two, honestly, you know, being chubby, you, you know, on the colon colon or baby and that there's nothing wrong with that right. <laughs> because in the first two years, the brain is developing the most and you need that extra fat for the brain development. So we don't get too worried about the numbers when they're babies. Right. If anything, mm -hmm. we worry about them being a little on the underweight side, but you know, you know, moms can, you know, continue to feed quite liberally till they're two years of age. So after two years of age, you know, parents should be concerned if the growth chart keeps going up more than how many, 85th percentile you said? More than 85th percentile for sure. I see, I see. So it's not one number of weight, you know, what could be okay for another three-year-old weight-wise because the height is different. Similarly, for your three-year-old, that particular weight may not be okay. I see. So I think that's important to kind of keep in mind. I see. Um, this is a very sensitive question. Yeah. <laughs> so when, uh, let's say you are, you are seeing a patient, let's say yeah. a five-year-old, yeah. okay? And then the patient is in like 75th, 85th percentile. Right. How do you start the conversation? Because parents might get very sensitive, right? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> every parent is defensive. Right. And, you know, like, what are you doctor? What are you doing, doctor? In our mind, the child is always underweight. You know, they are just... They're like, oh, can't be true. So absolutely, you know, they start the denial and they're usually comparing and they're like, compared to all our friends, children, you know, my kid actually looks very skinny. Mm. And what I tell them is the obesity is becoming so common that the other children who are overweight, you know, that looks normal Then your child who is, you know, maybe a little on the overweight side may look underweight. So don't compare, you know, look at the chart right. and that is telling you the truth. <laughs> But, you know, one appointment is not enough. So we kind of handle it, you know, more from a perspective of health. We really don't make it more like this is the number and, you know, this is why we need to do it. You know, presenting it more holistically from health point of view, parents start to understand it. And in the end of it, like the parents want the best for the children and we are all part of the team of their child. So usually they start getting it and then, you know, we start working towards nice, healthier goals. Nice, nice. So, so even um, kids who are taller yeah. can have a little bit more of weight. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but what we see is, yeah. you know, we have been told that, hey, you know, if you have a chubby kid, yeah. which means the kid is doing well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most common, like, you know, 80% of my parents are always asking, you know, how do I make my kid chubby? Yes. What can I feed? What can I feed? And, you know, the first 10 years, this is the thing, right? Every parent is trying to stuff more into the child. Yes. <laughs> and then till 10, they're saying, eat more, eat more. And then all of a sudden, around like 10 or so, when the kid starts to get overweight, then they're like mad at the child saying, why are you eating so much? <laughs> you know, and the poor kid is like, <laughs> you know, I'm hungry. And they're like, oh my God, like now the portions are cut down. You, you can eat only so much. 
so i think understanding you know that the child knows what they want you know go with the natural flow of things mm -hmm. and one thing really is the portions like when they are like little babies um i see like you know the parents have this big you know periya kinnathala avlo parasa avlo vechi tinichittirupanga whereas a portion for an adult you know if it's as big as a palm it's the same thing for a baby it's only as big as a kutti palm so mm. it's very little it's a small kinnathla vande maybe 3 or 4 or five baby spoonfuls is all a baby can eat um. but when you start putting so much in force feeding kids actually get food aversion um. then the moment they see a parent they are thinking they enna da kuduka poranga so at the bite the lay you know they start like clenching their mouth and not wanting to eat and the biggest complaint i get from parents is like you know saapra be maatingranga they're so fussy they're so picky but it's a negative energy associated with food I see. so i, I see. think that's the most important thing is like eating should be just such a natural fun process mm. there shouldn't be anxiety associated with food it should just be like you know we have to eat 3 to 5 times a day let's not make it stressful you know let's make it fun let's make it more you know go with the flow of things and if one meal your child doesn't want to eat it's not a big deal right another meal you know he or she is going to eat and so don't force feed them but on the other hand if they say i don't want food a don't be like oh ipa inik idli saaplena dosa suttu kudukrathu or like potu kudukrathu so if if they see options they are like hey this is great fun you know right. like i'm going to push this away scream and yell for that and then i'm going to get you know whatever he wants whatever they want and um. you know this this is almost like an attention seeking right if mm. the parents are involved you know talk even better them, then they're like hey this is working for me. so <laughs> a smart child should continue to do that right. so you just be like no you didn't eat lunch not a big deal you know i'll meet you at snack time so my son does that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Like and, so, and she knows that <laughs> and so did my kids i mean kids are smart and they should do that when parents come and tell me like you know blow adam pudikran like you know alugranga ne then i say that's good that means they're normal <laughs> that's a good thing they come with like a laundry list of complaints doctor either they like, i hear everything i'm like this is all very normal i'm glad they're doing that <laughs> but tell me what are you doing about it <laughs> and they look at me like it's all my problem i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> you're the one who needs to make the changes <laughs> in your conversation you you brought up a very good point right so there is a transition yeah where you force feed them and then all of a sudden yeah. they become obese and yeah. then you cut off the feed where is the transition point what is the common age that usually happens usually i would say like 10 is probably 10. yeah mm. because until then like they are being you know unfortunately big portions mm. and almost four meals that's the other thing like you know parents give them a breakfast lunch school lend the one donyo there's around 233 there's another whole thali meal mari kuduranga adukapram then they expect like around 839 you know they do one meal at 233 another one at 8:30 and what i tell parents is just do one healthy snack at the 2:33 and then do dinner around 6 and be done uh -huh. you know then at 8:30 they're like oh i made all this my child is not eating i'm like they just ate a whole coffee <laughs> at 2:30 <laughs> so 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 yeah. that brings an even interesting discussion yeah. i've seen two kinds of yeah. parenting yeah. right one parenting is they don't even care whatever they eat yeah. Uh, yeah. The, if they are hungry they feed it yeah. if you are not hungry if the kid doesn't ask we yeah. don't feed yeah. but that is not the indian way of parenting right right no, no, no. <laughs> indian way of parenting is we need to make sure that the right. food is up to their suffix yes exactly right yeah. and i've seen we go to so many potluck like yeah, and get yeah. together i've seen parents actually running around the kid <laughs> making sure that he feeds them Yeah. And then more importantly, whatever left behind, the yeah. parent eats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So they need to put the pesa the other on the soft after they'll get their own. Get their own right, right. Yeah. But I have this um uh, concept that I think in mindset wise we need to change from a parenting Absolutely. as well that yeah. It doesn't mean that it's good for the kids if you feed them more. Right. No, no. So should they stop feeding if they're not asking? yeah you know so i think it's not like totally free for all like the kid decide what they want to do mm. i think you as a parent you know need to have the routines first of all that's mm. important i mean you are the one who's controlling you know what's coming even into the house right mm. from doing groceries mm. when you leave the grocery store you should look at your cart and it should be just full of fruits and vegetables mm. and very less packaged food 
So that's under your control, what you bring to the house, what you display, like what, you know, easily accessible. There should be a counter of fruits available instead of like cookies sitting there. Other snacks like that should be a little bit harder for the kid children to access. What if the parent wants Oreo biscuit as well? <laughs> 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 then that ship has gone. <laughs> It's too late. You know, being a pediatrician, every appointment, you know, for us, it's not just the patient, right? The kid is one uh, and we have both the mom and dad. So yeah. it's always every appointment is three patients. Three people, yeah. We actually as pediatrician should get paid three, three, more. Times, <laughs> three times more, but it doesn't work that way. So I'm counseling the kid, I'm counseling the mom. And then mostly when we're talking about the child's issue, you know, the mother will be like, doctor, like I keep telling my husband this, but he's the one who... <laughs> Indian grocery store <laughs> brings the laddus <laughs> and the mixture, you know. <laughs> no, I'm like... <laughs> so, yeah. so then that brings a point that basically it is reflecting whatever the parents are doing. Absolutely, yeah. Ah. And, and going to that question, like, you can't be like, oh, let the kids say like when they want to ah. eat. I think you still need to have a routine, you know, this is breakfast time, like 7 is breakfast, mm. like 12, 12, 30 is lunch. 6, 6.30 is dinner, we are going to have two snacks in between, mm. two cups of milk. That and what we prepare for the meal is controlled by the parent. Uh -huh. But at a certain meal, you know, if they don't want to eat that, don't force. Mm. But also don't offer anything else. Be like, oh, you didn't want to eat lunch today, it's not a big deal. Don't have anxiety associated and stress associated with eating. Exactly. <laughs> and if they don't eat it, it's not a big deal. 4 o'clock will be snack, which could be like carrots and hummus. Yes. And 6.30 will be dinner. At some point, they're going to eat. eat. Uh -huh. If the kid starts to see, oh, you know, my me by eating is going to cause happiness, you know, that's a control that they have. Mm. So then if they are not feeling happy, they didn't get certain TV time, the kid is going to start controlling the eating and mm. be like, you know, I'm not going to eat this and see that reaction. Then they want to see that frustration in you. Right. And then when you start yelling and screaming, the child is, hmm, this is working. This is exactly <laughs> what I wanted. This is a fun game. It's like, you know, it's like a game of survival for them. <laughs> and the parents are like... <laughs> So their kids are very so, smart, very smart, and uh, you cannot let them manipulate very you. Smart, uh, you just have to be like it's not a big deal, but you offer continue to offer healthy things, mm -hmm. and more important, you, you eat it, you enjoy it, you don't make it look like oh eating fruits and vegetables is a punishment. Right. You be like this is great, it tastes so good. You know, once they keep hearing that, kids have such a good positive relationship with right. food that it doesn't become a big issue. Right, right, yeah. right. I've seen par other parenting is that um, if they do something wrong, yeah. They will say that, oh, you know, you need to eat spinach. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'll make yeah. me eat spinach. Yeah. So, so as, a, as a family, yeah. we need to make sure that, you know, eating is something like very normal. It's very normal. Very and normal. Yeah, don't reward like, you know, make spinach be the bad guy. Or similarly, don't be like, if you do this, I'm going to give you cookies or a ah, candy. Ah. So you're rewarding like bad food as reward and they're thinking this is good. Ah. Don't make that association ah. with food. Be like, oh, if you do this, you know, we can play like 20 minutes of hide and seek. Yes. You yes. know, they get the parents attention. I mean, in the end of it, the child is just looking for your attention. Yes. Yes. Everything comes back to that. They need validation as a right. kid. Right. So if you can provide it to them in other ways, instead of controlling it through food, I think that takes the stress out of food. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a wonderful point. Yeah. That's a wonderful point. Um, yeah. The other uh, aspect of this is, as a parent, yeah. sometimes I feel that, oh, you know, maybe my kid is not getting enough nutrient. Right. What yeah. if the patient, uh, what if yeah. my kid is not growing up healthy? Yeah, yeah. What is your take on that? No, I, I mean, I think that's the most <laughs> common. I think every parent's intention is good and I completely get it. And you are either, like most parents want that day's like, you know, nutrients to be done that day. Like it's like a science experiment. Your child is a science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> they have an, and unfortunately many of my parents are engineers so you know they have like, a, like a a, everything is tracked everything is <laughs> like an algorithm based exactly they're like oh they did this they did that but look at the big picture like do you want to teach them to have a good relationship with food and enjoy food or you know on that particular day do you want to be this was done that wasn't done did they get enough calcium enough iron Maybe on that one day it doesn't, but over a week, over a period of month, it is going to even out. Like, don't be too stressed about it. Mm. And that's our job, right? As, you know, as doctors, we are checking mm. into that, mm. you know, we are monitoring that. I, so I don't think like that's a good idea. And the other thing is, you know, at a young age, like talking to kids about all this, oh, if you don't eat, like you're going to get like diabetes mm. when they're really young. They don't even get that concept. <laughs> and they don't need to like, you know, high blood pressure and all of that. And the kids are like, what? Like, you know, why did 
even though food has like so much so just make it more fun it can be like you know this is great this tastes good it's you know make it more about some something like that then you know as you get older of course you can have the conversation right. so pediatrics is such a wide age range that we need to do it age appropriate sometimes right. i feel parents overwhelm the younger children with you know maybe their own like health issues mm. and you know issues they have with food they start burdening the child with mm. that and that's not a good thing mm. to do mm. so in in my uh, our channel audience know that um pediatric fatty liver is increasing as well we talked about fatty liver in adults mm. so in one of the video i said that you know yeah. if you eat a processed food yeah. basically you are adding up fat in your liver somehow right um so basically when you're trying to uh, tear a piece of a package mm -hmm. you're tearing a piece of your liver yeah. so that's what you correlate Absolutely. accordingly yeah. um but that is even more pronounced in pediatric population yeah. because the marketing gimmick is in such a way that they will attract you with all the added sugars yeah. um what is your take on that you know um will you ask the pair parents to avoid all the snacks or pack package foods or what is what do you usually say absolutely mm. i think like we said when you get the groceries you look at it and even the processed food that they buy i mean you know it is life so we can't mm. be like everybody can like cook everything from scratch right. i do get mm. it mm. but i say look at the ingredients one quick way to know is if in the first three ingredient it says enriched flour sugar or salt you can't buy that that's just mm. junk food mm. so you know if it's the fifth or sixth ingredient then the component of that is small it's small. okay well ah, okay. that's a quick way to kind of check into things I and see. and absolutely you mean you know say, say that again what is the enriched flour enriched flour or oh, enriched flour sugar salt sugar. that shouldn't be in the first three first three ah, so okay. if they just you know if they follow that rule of thumb typically they won't be eating white bread or you know white tortillas you know cookies so they'll get a lot more like you know whole wheat bread and things like that I so see. i, I think see. that's a quick you know rule to follow and like you said you know like things like juices is such mm. a big place of hidden yes. sugar parents yes. think it's so healthy if they're not eating fruits you know give exactly. them the juice uh. one little thing can have 30 grams and, yes. and you know and typically for a 2 year old 30 grams is what they should be having of added sugar the whole day whole day ah, so ah. that's not a good idea the other thing is when they young like a lot of indian parents are like oh na chakre kudukla doctor but now when the in the jaggery could create you know kalamitai <laughs> yeah or yeah or, or kalamitai or they are like making ragi, ragi. with ah. tons of like jaggery in right, there right right and mm. it's just another form of sugar it may mm. just be you know slightly diff, you know better version but sugar is so addictive when mm. you give a baby a sugar at an early age mm. that's all they want mm. then they just then they want to eat idli with sugar they want to eat puri with jam mm. and then then the parents are like why are they doing that but like you introduce sugar so early on oh. so sugar there's no hurry like even at age 3 you give them sugar they'll have more difficulty <laughs> that, but not getting used to it is a big thing so i think till 2 we say don't give any added sugar whatever is naturally in fruits you know that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine and 2 plus is the time so definitely like early on we see moms like you know pal lavand putting like bone meter and complan uh, like one of the worst things to do uh, so much sugar and they think it's got all these nutrients but giving a plain cup of milk two times a day you know milk has just naturally great taste you know your child will be fine but once you introduce them to the sugar they're never going to go back to plain milk so you're saying that complan will not make you grow tall absolutely <laughs> making grow fat <laughs> if that's what you're looking for <laughs> but it's yeah. it's a big big industry right it's bone meter yeah. complan yeah. uh, all those uh, yeah, but it has added sugars though absolutely it's added so mm. much sugar i mean mm. they do have some vitamins and some protein but uh. what you get you know on top of that is just so bad that it's not needed just have your milk and then maybe have some nuts have some eggs and you know it's going to be better i said this to one of my friends yeah. and then he said that you know he grew up with complan yeah, and yeah. he is okay now right right but when he grew up yeah. the package products were not mm. that much <laughs> i know i mean there's two ways right one like that's what most of my parents say like if they can eat whatever they want now like when will they do yes, doctor exactly. yeah and then like we grew up eating whatever we wanted but there wasn't all that you you know there was mostly homemade meat yes. cooked food there wasn't all this junk food available and then nobody also checked your numbers you know that's kind of why you are on a cholesterol medication mm. at 30 or 40 um. the first time you got your blood work done was so late that mm. you know but 
these changes have been happening over a period of time. Mm. So it doesn't mean just because you look skinny doesn't mean internally things weren't happening. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. You know, skinny fat is yeah. something that is very common in young uh, adults, yeah. especially yeah. Indian population. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that what you're seeing in uh, kids as well? Totally. So the one thing at like every patient at Asha Pediatrics has to by age six or seven get their fasting blood work done. Mm. And most parents are even shocked blood tests at this age and mm -hmm. fasting like an adult. But mm. it gives us so much use, useful information. We are checking the cholesterol, the thyroid, checking iron levels, vitamin D. And, you know, once the numbers come back and more than us talking and telling them, once the parents see the numbers, the kids see the number, they are shocked. Mm. I mean, I had probably one of the skinniest kids in my practice, mm. you know, at eight years of age had his blood work done and the triglyceride was like 800. Oh my God. The, wow. normal, should be, the normal should be less than 80. 80. 10, 100, 10 times more. 10, yeah, 10 times 10 more. 10 times more. Oh. And the parents were like, um, this can't be his blood work, must yeah, yeah. be a lab uh, error. Absolutely, uh, right? And then we said, okay, go to a different lab. It was 900. 900. Oh my God. So then it was such a wake-up call. But the good thing again with kids is it's so reversible. I mean, mm. that kid in that one year you know just changed the diet as a family they did it as mm. a family and the next time we repeated it was down to 300 and now he is like one of my older patients you know probably the most health conscious kid mm. and the parents now are like my god you know even when we are like tempted and we want to have some <laughs> snacks you he know he's always monitoring he's like mom why did you bring it like didn't talk to us and tell us it's <laughs> back and you know I mean they are of course thankful but right. he is a complete health freak and he takes such good care of himself oh, and, nice. and, and I'm just so proud of him wow yeah. nice um, yeah. where is that, uh, that that change happens it's very difficult to yeah. change the mindset as well yeah. you know we have been growing up saying that hey, you know food chubbier kids are more healthy yeah. Yeah. Um, younger leaner kids are looked down upon right. uh, yeah. where yeah. they are not putting on enough weight yeah. so you have seen so many people you know what can we yeah. eat to get my kids gain right. weight um, so, as you rightly pointed out, when you are surrounded by overweight or obese kids, mm -hmm. then your kid underweight might be normal. Right. Might be normal. Um, how do you teach them basically, like yeah. what age would be the right time, like six? No, I, I don't think there's a particular age. I think it's more like a natural progression. I see. Continue to have those conversations. And, and to me, I'm very, very particular that, you know, it can be about numbers mostly. It's really more about the overall health because we are also seeing like kids are so sensitive you know they hear words like you are overweight obese you know then we see the other problem of like eating disorders um, so um, i am seeing a big uptake in like you know in my teen girls having anorexia and eating disorders and those are one of the hardest things to treat from so, so educate me here. I yeah. was thinking there was mainly common and only like a white uh, Caucasian community. Yes, not anymore. Not, not anymore. Us. Not anymore. Even so, in Indian community. Absolutely. And mm. then from eating this like mountain of rice, you know, with mm. like the sambar poured in, mm. these girls look at one grain of rice and it may take them like 15 minutes to put that in. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's so, you know, we have to be very sensitive, mm. like no body shaming. Mm. I think just... And that's hard, like, you know, as parents, it really is hard, like, you know, walking that fine line between, yes. you know, you want to take good care of your child, but on the other hand, you want to be sensitive about how you tell them things. So I think it's a process and, you know, it's, it's it, there's no cookie cutter, like mm. each kid is also very different. So mm. for what may work for one child, you know, being direct for another kid, I need to follow a different approach uh. and each family is different. So I think you just kind of, you know, it's, it's very custom, like, you know, you just have to go with... And also with every family, we start one journey that doesn't work, you know, mm. we have to go through another Different pathway. Yeah. And mm. so certain kids actually, other than seeing me, you know, things may be getting worse, they, where they need to go to like, you know, um, lifestyle management, management clinics. clinic. Right. So mm. we refer them there. There's also great like nutritionists that they mm. can talk to. Mm. And that helps sometimes help, you know, the kids kind of figure, you know, mm. meals more than parents telling them why, what. Having those appointments right. would be helpful. I'm going to be honest with you. Five years ago when I was big, yeah. um, I didn't know anything about nutrition, being yeah. a doctor myself. Yeah. Um, as you know, in yeah. medical education, they don't focus upon nutrition that Very much. Yeah. The five years ago, then once uh, I started realizing what I'm doing wrong, yeah. uh, I'm so glad that yeah. I had Arjun and Atharva after realizing this. Yeah, that's true. If not, yeah. then I would have just inculcated the same habits. Yeah. So. How important is parents' education in this? 
I mean, that's the most important thing, right? Kids are just born as blank slates. It's mm. completely up to you mm. how you're going to raise them and what mm. you're going to teach them. Mm. I say every child is a good kid. There's never a bad child, <laughs> you know. So it's all the, the behavioral issues that kids learn from the parents. I think, you know, most of the education has to happen, you know. The parents have to be part of the team. And mm. it's a teamwork, you know. They play the biggest role. It's very easy for me to give the advice and say, do these things 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> Poor parents, they are the ones who have to like execute this, they have busy lifestyles. So it has to be something that's realistic, that works with them. Uh, uh, um, but it's important and you know, it's also important that they don't, they're not feeling guilty about, you know, I always tell them few days you're going to fall apart, mm -hmm. holidays are going to be different. Mm -hmm. You can't like stick to the same thing, you kind of have to go with the flow of mm -hmm. it. Most days if you do a good job, there are some days, you know, things don't happen. Don't feel overwhelmed by it or mm -hmm. don't feel too guilty or don't feel that like nothing can be done. Like, you know, you pick up, pick yourself up again and just start new and, you know, just don't have that lingering and negative energy around the mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. um, so. The main, everybody knows that when the kid is obese, yeah. uh, around like 10, 15, then that will translate into young adulthood. Yeah. And we know all the other problems with heart attack and all those Absolutely, things. Yeah. What is happening in young kids because of obesity? Why we should be concerned? Yeah. So one is the health problems. Mm. Even at that young age, we see them having high cholesterol. Mm. So many kids are pre-diabetic. Some actually land up getting diabetes, oh mm. fatty liver, you mm. know, like the liver functions go through the roof. Mm. And I have kids who are like 10, 11. We do an ultrasound of the liver and it's so much fat, fat. sitting there. Wow. And wow. for certain parents and certain kids, seeing that then really is a wake up call saying like, you know, this is not just in theory, it's actually really affecting mm. me. But that's one part of it. But we, I think with kids, it's really more the mental health issues. Mm. So much bullying happens when, you know, you are seven, eight mm. and you are like chubby, you know, the other kids really start bullying you. Mm. And it's, it's, I think that's the hardest part, wow. you know, what, mm. the, what happens to the self-esteem um. or when they're doing the physical education, when they can't run as fast as other kids, you know, other kids are laughing at them. Um. So that really starts affecting them mm. or, you know, when they go to like uh, girls, when they go to like get togethers, you know, they can wear like, you know, cute that clothes. Is, uh, it starts like they start noticing that they're like, oh, other kids look this way. I can wear those clothes, uh, you know, shopping uh, becomes an issue. Um, I had a little boy who was so like, you know, sad because his school uniform pant, he couldn't get the regular, like, you know, seven. He had to go to the husky size and wow. he was like, I'm a husky kid now. <laughs> you know, so they start like really, those things really start affecting the self-esteem. Wow, wow. So, um, yeah. you know, that brings the next sensitive question. Yeah. I'm asking you all the tough yeah. questions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the, um, yeah. the many people have come to me with this yeah. question yeah. that, hey, you know, I am health conscious. Okay. Right. Kid is a responsibility for both dad and the mom. Yeah. I am very self-conscious. What if the other spouse is yeah, not? Yeah. And how do you increase the conflict of interest for them? <laughs> it's it's common. You know, it's yeah. It's and then also like a lot of parents try to do the good cop bad cop. Uh, so you know, mom could be more like the strict person and say like you can't eat it, but dad is trying to be the liberal person. Um, and you know, when mom is gone, they're like, okay, parwala, yeah, you yeah. have to <laughs> because I also want to eat those things. <laughs> But not just with eating, I think with anything, we just, I tell, you know, families that, you know, the co-parenting is so important. Mm. Both of you being on the same page, mm. it's just, it's just so important. There's mm. no need to be the good cop, bad cop. You both being on the same page is like super important because otherwise kids are smart. They are going to manipulate the situation mm. and they are actually going to create a lot of issues between the two of you as a couple. Mm. You know, they'll come and they'll say like, but daddy said this, mommy said this. <laughs> And then you are just going to be like fighting all the time and the kids are going to be like, mm, this is fun. <laughs> Instead of yelling at us, now they're yelling at each other. So even if you have a difference of opinion, never like, you know, show it in front Incredible. of the child. Mm. Try to talk about it privately mm. and, you know, try to resolve that. And just remember, like, you know, the intentions are the same. I think both parents, meanwhile, they want to you know, raise good children. I think sometimes, you know, different people's approaches are different and Usually I feel that like when you sit them down, sometimes I actually have to take like mom to a separate room, talk to her separately mm, for five minutes, mm. talk to dad separately and then kind of give them, you know, coming that's from why the doctor. She, that's why she calls me separately and calls my wife separately. <laughs> that, that is so true. <laughs> we have certainly been through those 
phone calls. <laughs> so um, the uh, you said that we should be on the same page after yeah. COVID. People are not even on the same floor. <laughs> <laughs> A different floor. Yeah. Um, so let's mainly for Indian community. I think uh, yeah. the problem is the other way around. They are yeah. Yeah, they are thin. They want to become big. Yeah. But what if it was they are big already? Right. And right. where do they start? Yeah. How do they c- cut down the calories? So I think if they are start like we definitely don't focus on the calories. I think we make it more. You know, it's about health. Yes, and okay. mm. So we start with like you know you at this age if you're here you know think about like. What is it doing on your bones? You know, sometimes me telling, let's say I have a 15 year old who is already like 200 pounds and for the 15 year old's height, you know, the ideal weight of being like 120. So just saying like, it's like you are carrying an 80 pound like backpack on you constantly. Mm, mm. Think about what is going to do to your growing bones. And, Mm. you know, if you're having backache, what is it related to? So I think just giving them more, you know, realistic things like that they are feeling can help them. Mm. And then, you know, one of the main things is portions and Mm. just like plating, you know, which is commonly discussed. But, you know, when you have a plate, half has to be fruits and vegetables. Mm. A fourth is your grain and hopefully more often complex grain, like, you know, brown rice, quinoa, whole wheat pasta. And a fourth is your protein. And if you're still hungry, go back for more vegetables, go back for more of the protein, but Mm. try not to have much more of the carbs. Mm. So Mm. doing that, you know, and... I have them, you know, like, you know, we become a part of the team, the parents, the child, and then myself and monitoring them more frequently. Mm. Usually at that age, I'll only see them once a year for the physical. But if there is a kid struggling with the weight, we'll have them come back in four to six months, you know, again, plot them in the chart and show them what progress they're making. Getting the lab works, you know, tends to help because if they start seeing that the labs are getting better, it's Mm. very motivating for them. Mm. The kids get really excited, you know, that it's getting better. And we don't actually expect children mostly to lose weight because they're still growing. So Mm. if you are a 15 year old and you're already at like 200 pounds, as you're gaining height, unfortunately, the weight loss may not happen. Mm. And and that's okay. Mm. We say if you can actually continue to grow in height as a boy, you're going to go through this big growth spurt now Mm. and you maintain this weight and change some of the fat into muscle, Mm. you know, so you're just going to feel healthier and the BMI is going to automatically come down. Nice. So once they hear that we don't have to lose these numbers by a certain time, but even if we can maintain this number for a while and grow in height, you know, they feel more motivated. And honestly, puberty is one of the most awkward times for height and weight and mm. especially for girls. Like mm. many girls go before puberty, they go through a phase where they get chubby mm. and then the height starts to grow up. Mm. So during that phase, we really want to be very sensitive about the words we use. And mm. sometimes, you know, moms meaning, well, they'll be like, oh, you know, wait, put it up, you know, mm. talk to her doctor. And those are times actually I really don't bring up the weight because already hormonally they're going through so much in mm. their you know mind. Mm. So just talking to them about like, you know, good physical activity, nutrition, but also encouraging them saying like, yeah, maybe your weight has gone up a little, but your height growth is going to happen. Mm. And we actually do see that, you know, the height growth happens, you know, and then the body shape changes and kids like are very happy with how they feel and mm. long term they have a good relationship with the body and mm. you know they feel good about themselves and that's important wow this is such a such a complex concept especially in kids because yeah. in adults you know nowadays there's something called body positivity right right, right. so yeah. you know even though yeah. you will look very big or obese yeah. Sometimes there is a group arguing that, hey, no, you should be happy with what you look, yeah. which is totally okay. Right. But as long as there's no health concerns. Yeah. Right? So even with adults, we are coping up with all this emotional right. uh, disorder yeah. surrounding eating, yeah. especially kids when they're growing up, yeah. all these hormonal changes. Uh, I can't believe what they're going through. And um, yeah. around the puberty, yeah. um, when they are growing and everything, um, so you are saying that don't focus too much on cutting down the calories and everything. Just focus on the good things, you good know. Things, um, yeah. and good nutrition, good physical activity. Good physical activity, okay. And a lot of times you see parents are like, oh, so much TV, like cut down the TV. But what you need to do is like, hey, let's cut down the TV, but let's do this as a family. Um, let's let's go for a walk. Let's go for a hike. Let's play this in the house. You know, if you just keep saying cut down on the TV, but you are on your computer doing work, you know, everybody's busy. Five minutes, the child goes around, and then they're like, mm, "I'll go back to my screen too." So, right, I've been guilty of that as well. I, you yeah. know, I, I walk to my friend's place, yeah, and uh, my friend is actually watching soccer. Right, right. My, uh, her, yeah. his wife is doing Instagram, 
and then the younger kid is yeah. playing video game on the iPad. Right. right? right. So they say it's, it's iPad time. But iPad time itself is like three hours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> three oh my hours. God. Yeah. So, so I think as a family, if you change, I think it'll be easier for the yeah. kids to change yeah. as well. Um, so I'm going to tell you about the GI literature, right. what we are doing. Yeah. In kids, yeah. um, we take two, two groups of kids. Mm-hmm. One, no packaged foods at all for three months. Mm. Okay. The other group, fully packaged foods. Mm. Three months later, when you get the stool specimen, yeah. the proportion of good bacteria in the small intestine yeah. is more in the uh, natural foods Absolutely. compared to the yeah. uh, uh, older foods. And they f- they followed these people like 10 years down the road mm-hmm. and lots of behavioral disorders are present in these people where they took processed foods. Absolutely. It's yeah. absolutely mind blowing. Right, right, yeah. I I can totally you know. You can totally relate. I can totally uh, relate. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I um, think um, the, the reason that I brought Dr. Meena Satapan mm-hmm. is that I think um, the change has to happen when they are young and as a family. And if we do that, I think our society will be even healthier. Um, I can't thank you enough for all the good thoughts <laughs> that you have uh, given. Yeah. Um, if you can summarize one little thing for my audience and then say, hey, you know, this is what you should take home. Yeah. What will you say? I mean, I think I would summarize the one thing I would say is do it as a family. Don't make it feel like it's a child's fault that this happened and then the child needs to fix it. You know, it's good for everyone and do it as a family. And one last thing I also want to say, like we as a society as a whole, I think we are guilty and there are a few things that should change, mm. you know, one definitely would be is what we market to the children, mm. right? One, they're already on the iPad and all the ads that are coming are food related. <laughs> so this kid is sitting down and then saying, oh my God, Maggie and cookies, you know. <laughs> Obviously the child wants to like go eat that. Right. Second thing is, you know, parents and school. So school now is focusing so much more on science and math and parents are expecting that. They're like, oh, you know, under the school that they're teaching this, mm. that one is two grades level. So what gets cut is the physical education time. Uh, that gets like lesser and lesser. Playground space is low, yeah. lesser. They're building computer labs. They're building this. And parents are so happy. Oh my God, my kid is like learning Python or whatever. <laughs> I have no idea. And, and they're just getting fat. And then, you know, then, you know, then we can't like, you know, where is, we should put importance on our child's health, overall health. Uh, you know, it's great to get good education, but it's more important that, you know, that that's the longest time they're spending, you know, in school. So they should have a lot more physical activity. So I think those are two things, good, two good changes that need to happen. And the last thing is processed food is, you know, so much cheaper. Mm. And, you know, parents just find like, you know, natural food, from buying fresh fruits and vegetables is so much more expensive. And, uh, and time consuming. And time consuming, uh, preparing it is time consuming. Mm. So I think we need to, you know, try to make that be more available. If mm. it's not affordable, I can talk in theory, say do all this, yeah, but... Yeah. They can't even afford that. So, mm. you know, buying a McDonald's, you know, McChicken is like 99 cents worth of preparing a whole meal. <laughs> so making that more affordable. I think those three are like really important to do as a society. So we feel that we can help these parents who are, you know, struggling with the children. Nice. Thank you so much. Thank you You're so much. You're so for welcome. Your, thank you so, thank much. you so much. All right. Perfect. See you guys. Bye-bye.